So we're just going to get started. I'd like to introduce Josh Kwasny. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> He's a senior actual science major, and his thesis is Understanding Stochastic Calculus. And his advisor is Dr. Leanne Hong. Um, and we just... <laughs> We just want to politely ask everybody um, just to hold their questions and answers till the end. We'll call everybody back up um, just so we'll have it all done at once. Thank you. Okay, um, obviously the name of my thesis is Understanding Stochastic Calculus, but I want to make it clear I have no intention of teaching that to you. That'd be like me teaching a, a calculus class in 10 minutes. You know, that's not feasible, nor am I qualified to do such a task. However, when I was learning this material, um, Professor Hong, my advisor, told me something that really stuck with me. He said there's two types of people in math, you know, people who don't understand it and people who do. And in the middle, you have all the people who sort of and kind of understand it. And uh, frankly, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that, you know, I'm in the I don't understand category. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's not a lack of effort, but uh, the material requires a lot of, you know, abstract thinking that, you know, quite new to me. And here at RMU, we don't really have the, um, the math class that really push you in that abstract manner. But, um, you know, with Professor Hong's help, I was able to get to a level of kind of understand it. And that's really the best you can hope for when you understand or, you know, trying to tackle stochastic calculus. So my whole goal was to... Um, try to help other bachelor students, you know, with the general knowledge in math to kind of understand it as well. So luckily, you know, I'm not going to be teaching you stochastic calculus. You can, uh, you know, take a breather. You know, I, I'm taking a breather. Um, hold on. So today, but, you know, what I will be talking about is the motivation, you know, behind my thesis, kind of the journey of how I came upon this topic, you know, what I did and why it's even important to understand stochastic calculus. So I was introduced to this topic uh, when I was preparing for the mathematics of uh, financial economics actuarial exam. And it's MFE for short, so you know I don't got to repeat that. But the whole exam is about options and pricing options. And all an option is, it's an alternate way to buy or sell a stock. Uh, just a general layout, you know, you, you have an upfront premium which allows you to have the option to buy or sell a stock at a pre-negotiated price at, at a specific time. And that's all it is. It's an alternate way to buy or sell a stock. And, you know, finance people always find ways to make, you know, really simple things really complicated. I, I think they like that. Um, but stochastic calculus is the math that underlies the pricing of an option. And the issue with this, though, is that um, when you try to pass the exam, there's a big disconnect in um, the knowledge needed to pass the exam versus the knowledge required to understand what's actually going on. You know, for the exam, I just passed the exam this uh, December. All you got to do is memorize the formulas and, and plug it in, you know, a word problem. And, and that's what, uh, to be honest, what most people do. It's no secret. Uh, even the Society of Actuaries realizes that as they're taking this material out of the curriculum uh, in the upcoming year. Um, but, you know, the, the problem for me is that um, th if the whole exam's on, you know, options, how can you take out the, the fundamental math that underlies it? So, um, anyways, I was, you know, really interested in options. You know, I, I thought they were quite fascinating when I first learned about them and all the various ways you can vary them. So I took uh, Professor Hong's stochastic calculus class to kind of further my knowledge in that um, about options. And uh, we lightly brushed through Stephen Shreve's book on um, stochastic calculus, and that's really the gold standard. Uh, it's highly regarded and a very well-written book. You know, I purchased it, you know, when I took his class, and I realized it's completely incomprehensible for, um, for a bachelor-level student. Um, and I looked at this as an opportunity. Since no text really lies out there for a bachelor level student, you know, I, and I was in a perfect situation. You know, I just happened to have a professor who had a PhD in this area. So I thought it was a great opportunity to kind of create a text for, you know, to ease a bachelor student into this, you know, really rigorous material. 
And, you, and like all of us, my whole goal was to fill a gap in knowledge, you know, this big. That's all I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, that's what I sought to do. So what exactly did I do? So basically, I rewrote um, Stephen Shreve's book in much simpler terms, which means I just didn't do the, uh, the tough proofs. And I you know, skipped the sections um, that weren't relevant to the topic. But you know, I really focused on the main ideas. Uh, I tried to get the big picture. You know, I kept asking myself, you know, what is the author really trying to say? What, what is his primary message? And um, you know, my goal was to really provide logic that was easy to follow and flowed. You know, I wanted kind of like a narrative. I wanted the concepts and formulas to build upon itself. You know, overall, I wanted to provide commentary that you know, targeted uh, bachelor students. And really, what that meant was that uh, I tried to learn the material, um, checked out over my interpretations with Professor Hong to make sure they weren't incorrect, and flowered their wording up. You know, that's basically how I spent my semester. You know, but I believe, you know, my struggle with the material and my perspective is really what made my thesis what it is. Otherwise, I'd just be plagiarizing. Um, you know, I really think, you know, if, if I can understand it and if I can write it down, any person with the basic math knowledge, probability knowledge can understand it as well. So that was kind of the, the idea behind my thesis. Uh, so, you know, why, you know, all this talk about stochastic calculus, why is it even important to know? Well, you know, if, if you're not, um, you know, in finance or anything, I, I highly suggest you don't look at it. It's really dull, it's boring, and, you know, it, you know, it gives me a headache just to look at the book. But, you know, if you're in finance, you know, mathematical finance or, you know, actuarial science major, it's quite important to know. You know, options are becoming more and more uh, important and highly, uh, more commonly used in the finance world. So that means it's absolutely necessary to understand the theory that goes behind the pricing of an option. You know, you, you don't want to go out blindly using options without understanding how it actually works. And there was really three parts to understanding stochastic calculus. The first was simulating a stochastic process. And with that, in technical term, that means um, trying to model a random variable that um, changes over time. But I mean, you can just think of it as modeling a random process, you know, like a series of coin tosses, for example. And we use that fundamental, uh, the fundamental concepts of modeling a random process to model a stock price. And you know, as we discussed, an option is completely dependent on the stock price. So once we develop a model for the stock price, we can develop a model for our, our uh, option price. And that's really our ultimate goal. And, that, and that, that's really the plot this whole narrative. You know, first you, uh, you know, you figure out how to model a random process, you incorporate that into the context of a stock price, and then, you know, alas, you have your, uh, your model for your option price, and you're able to compute, you know, the actual price. So, you know, I wanted to keep this short, you know, for the benefit of both of us, but, um, you know, I just wanted you to understand what I did and why I did it. You know, that's, that's all I wanted to do. You know, I hope you got something out of this, you know, brief speech, but uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions right now. And if you have any on stochastic calculus, please ask Kong, because you know, like I said, I'm not qualified for such a task. Um, I mean, it, it's used to price options. So I mean, that I mean, it's really important. Um, options, like I said, it, it's a new way to buy a, a stock price. You know, if um, you know if it's profitable, you're able to buy the stock price. If it's not, you can walk away. So that uh, creating that premium, you know, to have that optionality, um, that's all created by uh, allowed by you know the stochastic calculus, which which uh, computes the option price. But, you know, I, you know, I don't have any personal uh, example or any example for you. Oh. How would you say that learning this material was different than learning any of the other material um, that you did? 
Yeah, like like I said before, I think RMU um, they just don't have a lot of the more abstract math classes like numerical analysis and so on. So it took a whole different um, you know mindset. You know, with actuarial science, stuff just makes intuitive sense. You know, you're you're dealing a lot with statistics, but with this, it was hard for me to think in such abstract terms. It was like a completely new thing for me. So after getting past that, that obstacle, I, I was able to, like I said, kind of understand it. But still, you know, I'd be naive to say that you know, I'm some expert or master. You know, I'm just happy to, you know, like I said, kind of understand it. Is that it? Or? <laughs> it's getting awkward up here.